The Ocean Cleanup is a non-profit organization with the mission to rid the oceans from plastic. We have two programs to do so. One is that we intercept floating plastics from rivers before they reach the oceans and we're out on the ocean in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch to remove the plastic that is already floating out there. Hello, I'm here with Stella Vandenberg. She is Catch Management Director for the Ocean Cleanup. Catch Management Director is indeed a job title that is not so common. Um, what it means is that me and my team are responsible to find ways um, how to manage the catch from oceans and rivers after we have extracted it. Okay, and I imagine there's uh, all sorts of type of plastics. We know that there are big plastics that we see out there floating around in the ocean, but then there are also tiny plastics out there. And should we, what should we prioritize in the sense of what's more destructive and what's harder to get out there and grab? So when we are out there uh, on the ocean catching plastic, we don't make a distinction between what's big, what's small. We are there to remove it because it doesn't belong in the ocean. And uh, we catch both small and larger pieces. Once the plastic uh, starts to degrade and break down into smaller pieces, it will get more difficult to collect it. So our priority uh, and the urgency to remove the plastic now is also to prevent it from breaking down into smaller pieces that will be more difficult to extract. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about what happens to the plastic after you've collected it? When we get the plastic out of the ocean, um, first what we do is on board of the vessel, we sort it into two main fractions, two main types of plastic. About 60% of what we catch is fibrous plastics, it's nets and ropes um, from the fishing industry. The other 40% is hard plastics, it's all kinds of objects, uh, sometimes parts of objects, anything you can think of that floats can be in the ocean. So the first step is to uh, segregate the two types because they require different recycling technology. So the hard plastics go to one recycler, the fibrous plastics go to the other recycler. And uh, we currently work together with two recyclers from the Netherlands. So we bring the plastic back to shore and then ship the containers to Europe where they get recycled. Then there is a step of material development to make the material suitable for application. And the way we are set up at the moment is that Kia, who is our global mission partner, they fund our operations and they get to use our ocean plastic in their electric vehicles. Oh wow, great. And roughly how much plastic have you uh, collected from, from the ocean so far? So combined from oceans and rivers, we just reached uh, a pretty amazing milestone of 10 million kilograms. Wow. Last year we collected 150 metric tons of plastic from the oceans. Now the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is an area twice the size of Texas, uh, in between California and Hawaii. And we have estimated that approximately 100,000 metric tons of plastic is floating out there. So there is a lot of work still to be done. Yeah. We require, of course, the funding to be able to do that and to scale up uh, this operation. So the operation um, can be made more efficient in terms of how we harvest the plastic. At the same time, it's also about how to navigate the system to the more higher density areas of plastic to be able to collect more. And in the next coming years, we hope to ramp up to approximately 15,000 metric tons per year, take that out of the ocean, and then hopefully uh, in 10 years from now, we can call ourselves out of business. Okay. <laughs> so different from a lot of other groups here that are hoping to build their business for a long time, you're hoping to be out of it. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. Okay. You mentioned uh, kind of the fishing tackle and things like that. Are there, are there other major sources of, of this plastic that you can identify? Is it a lot of it like just consumer waste or? So in the ocean, uh, what we find is 80% uh, of what we catch 
uh, can be attributed to the fishing industry. So that's both the ropes and nets, as well as crates, barrels and other items that we find there can be um, attributed to the fishing industry. We do a lot of research uh, at the Ocean Cleanup to understand the problem and the best ways how to address that problem. So we do modeling of the garbage patch to see how the plastic floats and how it moves. But also uh, we do research into the origin of the plastic that we collect. What can the plastics industry do to help with this problem? There's many ways uh, or many moments in the whole value chain of plastics where plastic leak out of the system and eventually might end up in the environment. And it starts all, of course, at the production of plastic um, and then into the waste management infrastructure. So it's a combination of the two uh, that where there's a mismatch you will find plastic leaking out of that system. And I always think about uh, the concept of reduce, reuse, recycle, recover and dispose. And along these steps there are plenty of things that can be done to avoid plastic leaking out of that system into the environment. And coming back to the work that the Ocean Cleanup is doing, cleanup especially from the ocean is very costly um, it's not something you should be willing to uh, wanting to do um, making sure that it doesn't end up in the ocean in the first place is important um, however cleaning up what is already there is also important because the plastic won't go away by itself and I would say one of the biggest needs that we have as the Ocean Cleanup is to fund the operations and make sure that we can continue to go out there and fish out the plastic. Right. Okay. Well, thanks very much. You too. For uh, joining me and uh, congratulations on uh, 10, 10 million kilograms. Is that right? It's that's for right. U.S. audience, that's 22 million pounds. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so and much. thank you for having me on the show.